Hi guys, Russ here from Wilson Land and Cattle Company. You ever need a small trailer for behind your side-by-side? -side? Or say maybe a garden tractor? Just a, I have one that I use on my side-by-side -side here. I use it all the time. But you didn't want to spend a $500 to $1,000 on it. You can build one fairly inexpensively. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Before we get started, Please subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, hit that notification bell. I'm not going to take you through the step-by-step -step process of doing this or, you know, cutting all the steel out and stuff. I try to not waste you guys' time. You're gracious enough to uh, spend time with me to watch the videos, so I don't want to waste your time watching it, but, you know, I want to want to try and get you, or I want to help you along enough that you can do these builds on your own. We have a trailer axle here. This is a mobile home trailer axle. We need to cut it. We have it marked here. Our trailer is going to be 13 feet long and 4 feet wide. And this trailer axle is way too, long, too wide for this build. So we just take and cut that pipe and weld that back together. These mobile home trailer axles, they're fairly inexpensive right now, at least in my state they are. Um, the state of Pennsylvania has outlawed them for road use on new trailer builds. So people are trying to get rid of these things like crazy right now. Um, you can pick these up for 25 to 30 bucks a piece. I picked two of these up for 50 bucks and I have six spare tires for on it. So. I found mine on Facebook Marketplace. That's a good good starting point or any of your local classified ads or this here's the trailer I got the pieces cut got everything laid out it's tacked together I'm gonna be welding on that here this morning I have 45 angle degree angles cut on it on the corners to make it look nice and then up here we have pieces of pieces to support the tongue and then this piece here will support the tongue this direction I have one that I built that I don't use this tongue but this trailer I don't want it to be really super flexible because I don't want it to break the solar panels so I'm putting this just putting this extra pipe on here and to find square I got it laid out I got it laid out on, on wooden blocks it's just easier to line the joints up for me and then measure from this corner to this corner and measure from this corner to that corner and the number should be exactly the same and that will make your tra your trailer square whenever you're laying this out you want it on a on, you want to lay it out on a flat area so you don't have a twist in it because whenever you get it welded together and you have a twist in it that twist will be in it forever so extremely hard to straighten out i did that with a head gate that i used for cows one time and i had about a three inch center on it. i drove the tractor over it i did everything possible to try to get that straightened out and it's surprisingly how strong that is once that's all welded together now to set your axles on a trailer and i learned this the hard way so i want to try and help you out and not make the same mistakes that i did in the past i bought a trailer one time it was a homemade trailer it had mobile home trailer axles on it, it was a, a double axle trailer whenever they built the thing they put the axles right in the center of the trailer whenever you put the trailers put the axles in the center you don't have any tongue weight and if you don't have any tongue weight that thing just it just sits there and rattles and and, and jitters and it causes a lot of problems going down the road and it can be very dangerous because um, I actually took that trailer out of service very shortly after I bought it because I was afraid it was going to pop off the tongue of the truck going down the road going you know 50 miles an hour and that could be a disaster so I've also I've already harvested the axles out of it I'm in the process of cutting the steel out of it now and and using uh, treated wood that was was used on the decking of it to set an axle correctly on a trailer you want to set it one third up from the back or two thirds back from the front. That way it will give you tongue weight, but it actually supports your the load on the trailer as well. So you won't have any problems heading up the road with it if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and get this axle here cut and we're going to do some welding. 
Um, I probably won't do a lot of video on the welding, but we start setting the, the solar panels on there. We'll get the, I'll show you how we get the axle on there, get it lined up, and we'll set those solar panels on there. I gotta build another frame for the solar panels. And we need to be able to tilt them solar panels from 15 degrees to 60 degrees for my area. Depending on what time of the year is dependent is dictates the, the angle of the solar panels. I gotta come up with a something to do that with and I'm, I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do it yet, but we'll get it figured out. Always wear your PPE. You wanna wear eye protection. If you never had a piece of uh, steel in your eye, you never want it in your eye because it has to come out. It can't just stay there. It causes a rust ring in your eye and they have to cut, the longer it's in there, bigger the area that they have to cut out of your eye to, to get that so you know if you get a piece of steel in your eye you get your butt to the eye doctor to get that out we're gonna go ahead and cut this before we cut that completely off we'll get this one here started get it pretty well cut and then we'll cut them both at the same time you gotta watch with this so it doesn't pinch your uh, disc and if it pinches the disc, it can throw throw the grinder up into your hand and cause a big cut. And you don't want to do that because you're going to go for stitches or get a digit put back on. I use these here. They're from Benchmark Abrasives. They work extremely well. They're thin and they last pretty. They last. They're probably one of the better lasting cutoff wheels. And I'll put a link in the description for those. I buy them 50 at a time. I guess there's wires for the brakes going through it. I uh, almost ran you guys over. clamp on this here. Now we just need to build racking for the solar panels. Turned out pretty nice. It's a little bit of welding, but not too bad, probably about I got about two hours worth of welding in that and maybe four or five pounds of welding rods. We have this, have the tongue and everything welded up. Here's some of our welds. Let's see them. I'm pretty happy with it. It's not, some of the welds aren't perfect, but you know, it really doesn't matter because it's going to stay together. Uh, next, next process, next step here is to put the put racking on there. We need to have our solar panels so they can move up and down. I'm not quite sure what we're going to get into on doing that yet, but we'll figure something out. Hey guys, it's a couple days. Well, it's a few days later. Had a few things I had to do, so I couldn't be working on my or working on this project. We got this, this section here is pretty well done. So what we did, we just built a trailer frame, had the axle, cut the axle, welded it back together. And then I put a ball hitch on it whenever I welded it up. And then we got six solar panels on here.
Yeah, build it so this will pivot because we need to be able to adjust with the sun. In the winter time, the sun's lower in the sky, so we have to have a more angle on our panels. And then in the summertime, the panels will be more flat laying. We just put a pivot, pivot on here. I was gonna put bracing on there, but <laughs> there's not that much weight on here. I mean, that, that's pretty darn solid, so I'm not even gonna worry about bracing. It's not like I'm hauling it from here to there to everywhere, so it's okay. And then, of course, we cut slots and just a piece of flat bar, threaded two half-inch bolts, and then we put, we need pivot points, so I put a pivot point here and a pivot point there. And then we have the six solar panels on there. They look good, they're nice and solid. I wasn't sure how this project was gonna turn out because I never drew, do, do any blueprints or any drawings whenever I build something, I just start building it. I have an idea in my mind and I go with it. You can pivot it this way and then I have a jack to raise and lower the tongue to set them panels flat or to where we're getting the most sunlight. They're not wired in yet. That's gonna be a video in itself because we what we have to do, these are 12 volt panels. We need them at 24 volts. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hook them up in parallel and in series. So what we're gonna do is hook two solar panels together to get our 24 volts. And then we're gonna hook them in series to get our, our, uh, our wattage. These put panels are 120 watts. These here are used solar panels. I bought them oh, probably 10 years ago for another project that I never got done. Just never, never got to it. I wanted to put a solar back up in for our house and it just didn't happen. So I've been slowly using the solar panels that I bought. I bought 10 of them and there's six of them and I have one on a horse trailer for whenever we're out camping. And then I have another one on a fencer. There it is guys, it's all done. Pretty well done other than the wiring turned out pretty good ideally these would have been on the solar pump itself but the solar pump we had to move into the woods where there's no no sunlight and then we're going to set these out into the field and then run an extension down to the solar pump and the battery bank okay guys please subscribe like comment share with a friend hit that notification bell check out our merch store I have a link in the description below and we'll talk to you on the next one. Have a good one.